Gladiators ready! I always want to say that. Um, so gladiators, yes, sword and said epics. Uh, Hollywood loved them. They had Kurt Douglas and his chin overacting in Spartacus. Um, and of course, Russell Crowe uh, rocking the blue steel. Look at him go. And of course, who could forget John Hanna spouting numerous obscenities in the Spartacus TV show. Primus against Pompey finally mine and the gods jam in ass! which I kind of personal favourite, at least the first season. Um, and in fact, Spartacus' TV show led to one of my most favourite board games um, of a TV series, which is the Spartacus Blood and Sand board game, which is a riotous amount of um, beer and pretzels game um, of gladiatorial combat. Um, and up to now, to, for me personally, has been kind of the high watermark of, uh, of gladiator combat games. However, there is a fresh new contender on the marketplace, um, which is coming to Kickstarter in September, which may well challenge the throne of Spartacus, um, and that's Gladiators um, from Bad Cat Games. Um, it's a card-based, skirmishy, battley, stabby, stabby, uh, uh, gladiator, come back here. So, let us have a closer look at how this little beastie actually works. Uh, so, yes, Gladiators from Bad Cat Games. So, yes, as I said, it's a card-based, uh, game um, for stabbing each other in arena combat um, and that's kind of how it's going to work so it's take the theme of gladiators which we love rippling muscled oiled men in sandals running around half naked in a uh, sand pit stabbing each other um, so how's it going to work well it's really quite simple it can be played um, as a two-player game which is kind of fast loose sort of uh, stabby stabby sort of challenging each other or it can be played in groups which adds some more elements to the game a bit more tactics so i'm going to kind of run you through how all that's going to work um how the game plays first of all and then kind of go to some thoughts and feelings after that um so let's commence that um so gladiators how's it work that's a good question <laughs> So, at the start of the game, you will first of all end up selecting a, um, a gladiator. Um, and there is a bunch of them, um, and they're all colour coded, and they all come with their own set of cards, base cards. And there's three types of cards in the game. There is an attack cards, defence cards, um, and effect cards. Um, and they all have differing abilities. Obviously, attack cards will mainly revolve around stabbing and killing people. Um, the defence cards will defend against those, and the effects are kind of muddled in between, will allow you to draw cards and other stuff. Um, now, the cool thing about the game is, um, how it works is, your deck of cards kind of represents your uh, your, your level fitness kind of almost so as your deck dwindles you become exhausted when you run out of cards you're knackered so um, you need to keep a hand of cards so it's all about not just playing your cards but managing the hand of cards that you have so let's go and have a look at how the actual game is going to work so as I said you're going to pick a gladiator um, any one of these will, get it, will do and they will give you a color-coded deck relating to your gladiator uh, which you will get in amongst that will be different cards um so just like this there'll be some attack cards some defense cards um, and some effect cards each of the different gladiators has a differing set of cards that they start in the base game so you'll get your gladiator you're going to get that your deck of cards you're also then going to pick some more cards off the decks your choice five new cards you're going to pick any from any of the decks you want um i'll just take some random ones so i'll take a couple of attack a defense and a couple of effect cards that will then take you up to a full deck of 14 cards and that's your starting hand there also what you're going to do is you're going to randomly pick a ludus um, which is gladiator score and that will give you some tactics cards um just like this um and you've got them and the very start of the game what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of those tactics cards to take into the battle with you and again these do various things they're going to give you extra cards during the game maybe um, boost attacks um all different sorts of stuff and again each of them is different for each of the luduses so there's a good bit of variety between the gladiators and these cards so if we're playing with more than two players then really then we start using the events cards these cards here and what they do is they add a level of scoring with there's more of you playing so what is going to how it breaks down is this um as you can see on there there's a first and second place rewards so there's a reef that you will get a reef counter that you will collect for the first or second i've gold silver or bronze um there's also it tells us how many favor tokens are actually in the pool this game to be to be gained by doing attacks uh, by playing cards and other stuff so there's a finite amount of them now at the end of the game end of the combat round whoever's won will obviously get the first player reef but they also get whatever favor tokens are remaining um, at the end of that 
if there is any. If they've obviously all gone, then there's none to claim. Then what will happen is the favor tokens you've got, you can cash them in for various extra additional reefs that you can add to your player board. So it's kind of a mini game. You're adding these in there. Essentially, if you can fill your entire board up with these reefs, that's how you're gonna work out who actually scores and wins at the very end of the game. Now, depending on how many people are playing and if we're gonna play a, a tournament or event, which can go over like three matches or more, whatever you fancy, then we will uh, initially take these turn order chits and we have randomly picked by each of the players that are playing and they will have numbers on them. And that will detect uh, where you're gonna go in the turn order. So you obviously put in a preset pool, depending on how many players are playing, pull that and then it will work out in the player order. And that's what we do. Um, now, if you're playing the full game, what you'll start off with is a player board. Um, when you're gonna have four wounds tokens, um, five favor tokens, and you're gonna have a gambling chits. Now, what you're gonna do is once everyone's selected the gladiators, you'll take the chits that relate to the gladiators in the game. And before we get going, you select one of these as you're gonna bet on. Um, so there's odds relating to that if they are the winning one. You can bet on yourself, you can bet on anyone else that was out there. Um, now, initially, when you first find it, when you first play it a few times, you're gonna kind of be in the dark and not knowing what's going on. And this is kind of a game, I will say caveat now, um, initially, a bit slow going because you're going to obviously learn in the rules. But once you actually understand how the decks work and how the game works, and more importantly, how the different gladiators function, then you're going to kind of have a more of a, a window into how these work and they become more effective and, and much more interesting at that point. Um, so you're going to pick a gladiator chit, any one of them, which relates to one of the players in the game, and you're going to put the face down, and then you don't look at it again. You can't. So it's just you've blind bet on that or you bet on that, and we'll see how that turns out at the end of the fight. So. How do we actually play the game? What happens? So I've got my um, gladiator, which comes with an ability, which you can use during the, any, any round, any turn. Um, but once you've used it, it gets flipped and doesn't reactivate until the following sort of combat round. Um, and again, these will give you things that allow you to block or to give you extra favor, all sorts of stuff. Um, but I'll look maybe a little bit more into that in a minute. And again, if you look on the Kickstarter, you can see more details on how those are all gonna function. So I've got my hand of cards. If I'm player one, I have to lead with an attack card. Um, I can, the only other option I can do is discard a card down to a draw. Now, I can only do that if I have no attack cards in my hand. And doing so will cost me a favor token doing that. Um, so I'm spending them to do it, which is essentially victory points at the end of the, the round of combat. So you ideally don't want to milk through too many of those. Um, so as I've said, there's a helpful little demo card here. There is various cards. What you're going to get is a symbol at the top, left, which relates to what the card is, whether it's attack, defense, or effect, what the card's called, um, a purdy picture of a gladiator, all ripply and muscly, and then it will have a break card symbol here. So that will tell you the card that can stop that card taking effect. Other than that, down the bottom, there's gonna be some text down the bottom. If there's a wing on it, the wing will activate as soon as you play that card down. So that might be drawing cards or gaining favor or doing something else, sometimes combos. Um, and then below that is a lightning bolt card, which essentially, if that card's left in play and no one, the, your opponent cannot stop it, cannot break it, then those effects will take effect and you'll get or do whatever that is. And that's pretty much how it functions. Um, it's really quite a simple game. And as I say, it's kind of like a poker game because you're gonna be looking carefully at your hands because what can happen, as I found when you can play, is you can get a run of cards. You can have a, a fight with an opponent where you're playing cards down. He's attacking you, you're defending, then he's breaking you, then you're doing this, which is all well and good. But bear in mind, there is a table of other gladiators watching hungrily um, as you play this through. So whilst you might have a sustained barrage of attack with someone, it will leave you low on cards, which as we said at the start, will relate to exhaustion. You can be exhausted by running out of cards, but more dangerously, if you are low on cards, everyone else at the table has seen that. Um, so then you're gonna be leading the next fight. And if you've got a low set of cards, it does leave you open to basically be murdered. Um, and it can get a bit ugly. Other than that, wound tokens down there, you start with four of those. Um, any wound against you will obviously take one of those off. Run out of those and you're dead. So it's a kind of a version of player elimination, depending on how you're gonna take it on that. What I have found is because it kind of moves pretty quickly with paper playing cards, bang, 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 it means that you're not sat out around for too long. Um, obviously the more players are playing, the more chance of that happening. But you will find is everyone kind of usually mitigates their hands down so that everyone's kind of at a similar ballpark. Um, so you're only at best gonna be out for a few hands, hopefully. 
Um, and that's kind of how the game works. It really becomes down to the game once you understand how these cards work, and more importantly, all the different variations of the cards, it becomes then that poker element takes effect where it's a bit of a bluff or it's kind of trying to work out, have they got this? What can I play that will lock off this fight? Uh, can they retort to that? You know, if you've seen, it's kind of watching your players, the other players, and what the cards they've played. If you know that they can't defend a certain, against a certain attack and you've got that attack, then brilliant. You just wait, you bide your time, and then go for them because you know they're going to be a pushover. Um, so it very much is playing your cards close to your chest um, and, and keep an eye on what's going on, even if you're not involved in the combat. What are people playing? What can't they defend against? What can't they play? What can't they attack? So, as an example, I will lead the attack with a Viper Strike, which I will pop down there. Now, that card um, has a couple of abilities. Obviously, Viper Strike is an attack card. It can only be stopped by a Deflect card being played against it. And if that card isn't stopped in the thing, then what it will do is it will do a wound and I will gain a favour. And every time you do a wound against uh, another Gladiator, you also gain one of their favours. So that's kind of handy to do. Um, then you target player, if you successfully win them, discards one card, and then play a disarm if able. So it allows you to chain cards. Now a disarm card, if I've got one in my hand, which I have, um, I can then play that straight on top of that one, which allows me to draw one card from the target gladiator. So I'm reducing his hand size even more. That's quite a vicious attack against that player. Now, if he had a deflect, he could play that down I'll use mine as an example here for the minute. A deflect will go down on top of that card, stopping that happening. And that allows that player to draw a card. Um, and then if that can't be stopped and the feint is the only card that will stop that, you will be able to play a stagger or disarm if possible. So you're, again, you're chaining cards. Now, some of these, like a stag staggers or feints, will often close down an attack. Um, so the tagger ca stagger card, for instance, is a target must discard a card and you gain more favor. Um, so you can see how that works. You start getting into these rounds of chaining. What you're ideally looking to do is try and close down a round of combat as fast as possible. You want to win and get out with as much cards as you can. Um, other than that, you can, of course, play one of our tactics cards. And again, this one, for instance, is all out attack, which if I reveal this card um, to immediately draw three cards in your hand, these things are really helpful. You will find getting cards back in your hand actually isn't that easy. Um, and especially if you're getting ganged on and bastards and crude, then, you know, really that card management mitigation, getting those cards back is massively important. Um, as you get whittled down, desperation sets in. And that's not much fun. Um, and that's really how that all works. So there's gladiators from Bad Cat Games. And, you know, on the whole, I will say it's been massively um, embraced by everyone I've played it with. We've all enjoyed it. All good, good fun. Um, and if you're looking for that sort of fast, sort of fighty card game, then th this is good. It's got an interesting mechanism with that trump idea of the games where you're putting cards down and then you can't, certain cards can break it. That's really good fun. Um, and on the whole, it plays very quickly, especially the two player games, really fast. Um, upwards to about four is, is perfectly fine. What I did find would drag a game on a little bit is how many of those actual arena matches you play. They do can swing a little bit on the lengthy side, so I would kind of cap that at three at the most. I think to play to four to five would probably run this into a good few hours and it would outstay its welcome. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, anything that we really didn't like? If, if I say the only thing that kind of fell flat for me um, and a lot of the groups uh, I played with is the betting. The betting, um, it just doesn't have enough open information straight off the bat that you're really clear of. A lot of betting games that I've played a few of them, I love a bit of betting games, and especially something like um, Sparkers, the original Sparkers, there's a lot more open information up front, so you kind of have a really good gauge of what you're betting against. Whereas in this, there is betting odds on the Gladiator cards, but I don't know, it just, it's not until you've played a couple of rounds of it, really, when you start getting an idea of what the, the abilities of those Gladiators are. I don't know how necessarily that could be fixed, um, but yeah, that's the only real area where I say is a bit fudgy, is that the betting isn't as satisfying as I'd like it to be. And yes, so the betting. Um, other than that, yeah, it's really good stuff. Um, if you're looking for that style of game, then it's great. As you say, if you've enjoyed Spartacus and like Spartacus, then you will love this because the fighting is pretty much the same as Spartacus arena matches, except instead of the dice mechanisms that had in that, there's these cards. So it's card management instead of dice management, but works very similar sort of stuff. So that really great, satisfying stuff. Can't knock that enough. 
excellent stuff. Really enjoyed that. Um, and that's kind of it. I'd be interested to see what the Kickstarter brings because there's ideas for new gladiators and some other bling that's coming to it. Um, and we should, I will be as riveted watching how that evolves as, as you find people out there in uh, internet land, board game land. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was all good fun. Um, so yes, if you're in the market for some fast, loose, violent bit of fun, then Gladiators has you more than covered. We will give this eight upstanding Jupiter's cocks out of ten. Oh yes. So snatch the baby lotion, grab a loincloth, and prepare yourself. Gladiators, it's the violent love child of Top Trumps and Poker. And in my book, that's all right by me.